Hey there, this is Jason Freed at 37 Signals, and as promised, I want to walk you through our product strategy base camp project. This is the place where we decide what to do, where we kind of think about the things we can do, where we sort of debate the different merits of the things, and then line them up for the next cycle's worth of work. So um, let's just jump in and take a look. Um, I'm going to go through this sort of ad hoc, and if you have any questions, please post them down below in the comments, and I'm happy to address them. Um, later on. So first of all, we're going to click on the product strategy project. Now, let me give you a little bit of a framing, especially for those who are not familiar with Basecamp. This is a Basecamp project, what you're looking at right now. Everything about the thing, in this case, product strategy, lives in this one place, on this one page, in these organized boxes, which I'll go through in a minute. So this is the name of it. This is who's on it. So in this case, there's three of us that are on it. And these are the tools and the places and I'll go through these so you can see what's in them and we'll look at actual stuff. Um, and then down below, all the tools and the places is a timeline. This is every single thing that's happened in the project in real time, minute by minute, since the beginning. So comments, thoughts, discussions, all that stuff, pictures, to-dos, whatever it might be, it all lives down here. So if you're looking for something, you know what happened today or yesterday or whatever, a good thing to do is just jump into the project, scroll down a bit, and you'll see everything right there. All right, that should be, again, enough of a general framing um, to give you a sense of what we're looking at here. So let's um, start with, um, let's see, let's start with, uh, let's start with, with docs and files. So the docs and files section, which is right here, I'm going to click on it is where we keep all of the actual pitches. A pitch, which I'll show you, is, is, is text, sometimes a sketch, but it's a general idea describing, again, in a general sense, so you can kind of have a sense of where the edges are, uh, a feature idea or an enhancement or something like that. And we keep these in different folders. We're currently working on cycle five right now. Some of this is gonna make sense, some of it's not. Just, we're in cycle five. Um, this is cycle four, this is cycle five. Um, and I'll go into cycle four first. So this is a collection of things that we decided to do last cycle. Um, the purple ones are for hay, and the yellow ones are for base camp. And you'll see that, for example, I'm going to go into one here. This is kind of what a pitch might look like. Um, kind of just we usually start by describing the problem. So in this case, someone sends you a link to a base camp project. They, hey, they say, hey, check this out. You click the link. You don't have access. It's a whole thing. you got to ask one for access. It's like, eh, that's kind of annoying. So there's a number of projects where we don't really care who sees them, um, you know, internally, of course. It's not a public project, but internally it is. So we decided to come up with this new idea called Open Projects. And we talk about some customer feedback and, and a whole bunch of things and the appetite we have for it, which is like how much time we're willing to spend on it. Not how much time it could take, because it could take forever but how much time we're willing to give it. That's what we call an appetite, which is different from an estimate. Um, and again, I'm happy to clarify any of these things in the comments below uh, if you're curious. Um, then we talk about sort of our solution, an idea, a general pitch for it, um, some really, really rough sketches to make sense of it all, and sort of that's it, right? Um, I'll load up all the comments so you can sort of see where it started. Um, all right, so here's the end of the pitch. And then there's a discussion, right? And there's some questions and some comments and some thoughts. And we go back and forth on a whole bunch of different things. And then at some point, I think David jumps in. So Brian and I are working this out. And I think David jumps in at some point. Let me see. Okay, David's not in this particular conversation. But um, we go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth over a matter of a few days. So this started out, initially it was pitched on um, July 21st. And um, I commented... Well, actually, this is edited, sorry. So it was edited, it was last updated on the 21st. But the first comment was on the 28th of June. And this discussion happens all the way through July 21. And it all happens here. This is a fundamental, important part about Basecamp. This discussion is not happening in chat somewhere. It's not happening in another tool somewhere. It's not happening anywhere else. It's all right here. So the entire history of everything we've talked about about this thing is attached to the thing itself. Basecamp excels here because it puts every single thing in context. 
you might be used to writing something up somewhere and then discussing it in Slack and then discussing it somewhere else. Now you've got scattered conversations all over the place. In Basecamp, we do it all in one place, so you never have to wonder if there's anything else to it. It's all right here. So that's one pitch. And you know, all these things are different pitches with conversations and different people involved. I'm gonna go back up a, a level here and I'll look at cycle five. Cycle five, which we just started. Um, these are the things we're planning on doing. Again, hay stuff is purple, base camp stuff is yellow. And um, here's another example, data retention. Um, so here's some ideas I sketched out for how this could work, how this could look roughly, what it kind of might mean and how it might function. And we went back and forth, back and forth, um, and uh, had some more commentary down here. So I'm not gonna go through all of these because at some point that would be laborious, but you get the point. So how do we get to this place to come up with the final projects we're going to do this cycle? Well, that begins back here. Um, in the card tables. Now, card table is a brand new feature that's shipping in Basecamp soon. Depending on when you're watching this video, it might already be out. Um, but we've been using it internally for a few months. It's like Kanban, but with our own unique spin on it. So let's go into uh, Basecamp shaping. So I'm going to click on that. Now let me walk you through this. So this is where we kick off ideas. This is actually uh, a special section at the top of the card table that is not a column. It's a place to basically drop things. It could be triage if you're working on some reactive style work. It could be just dumping ideas in. But you don't have to think about categorizing them. You don't have to think about which column they go in. In fact, they're not even part of the process yet. They're just part of the idea generation. So all that happens up here. So here's some other things. We're thinking about bringing hill charts to the card table. Um, we've got some ideas for simplifying internal links, improving navigation between files and, and folders. Now, this is not a backlog. These don't stay here forever. These are things we're sort of considering at the time. And by the way, even though we've begun this next cycle, I froze this in time so I can walk through this demo so you can see what this looks like. But if we're beginning a new cycle, this all might be cleared out. So that wouldn't be fun to look at. So I've got to kind of put this on hold for a minute so we can look at it. So these are some of the things that were floating around in our head before we decided what we were actually going to do, all right? We also have a category here called not now. So some of these things, I'll click not now, are things that we've decided definitely not to do. Not ever necessarily, but definitely not now. So you can just take something here and just drag it to not now, and now it's out of this set of potential ideas and over to not now. Um, now, down below, this is where you have the Kanban-esque um, columns, right? You can make as many as you want, all that stuff. But here's typically how we set it up. So we have this idea of shape next. These are ideas that we pulled down from here into here, right? I'm not going to do this, but into here. Um, and either, these are things that we're going to shape up next. Shaping is like what we just looked at. Again, go back. Shaping is sort of like one of these pitches, right? Where you explain the idea that you're gonna do. So um, you, when you're gonna shape something up, it sort of take this form. It might start as a much simpler version and evolve as feedback comes in, but uh, essentially that's what we would start doing. So these are things we wanna shape up next. These are things that are sort of in progress that are being shaped. So these are just to shape. This is like, if I was, let's say I was shaping this next, I'd drag it in here. Now, Brian, who I'm working with on this project, knows that I'm working on shaping this. Um, when it's done, ready for feedback, I drop it here, okay? Um, and then at some point, we discuss, 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 and if we still like it at that point, we would drop it over here into ready for betting table. Now, the betting table is the place where a number of us to get together and discuss the actual projects we're going to do. Because we might end up shaping up or pitching, you know, nine things, but we might only end up picking four. But once we're all shaved up, we put them in the betting table, the column. The betting table itself has a phone call or a, a Zoom call attached to it. So we would eventually have a discussion about this live or you know, virtually live. And then we would decide out of all these things, which ones are actually gonna make it into the cycle. So in this case, these seven projects 
made it into the cycle. And the cycle actually just began a few days ago, so we're beginning work on these things. As we complete projects, we would drag them into done. Um, and we also have this really nice thing called on hold, which you can turn on for any column. And on hold is essentially a place to put stuff that's sort of on pause. So a lot of people would have to create, if you're using other Kanban style to tools, you'd create another column, maybe called blocked or whatever. The problem with that is, again, I'm getting back to this idea of context. When you take something out of that column and put it in a different column, you've lost the context of where you're blocked. So the on hold idea allows you to sort of put things on pause, but keep them where they are, what stage they're in, which is a very unique approach to this, which is really kind of a, a big deal, even though it's a, a subtle nuanced thing. Those who do this and sort of use this will understand um, how valuable this is. So we have this on hold column as well. Um, I'm going to turn that off. And um, so that's kind of how the workflow goes. Now we have the base camp one and we also have a hay one. Similar structure, ideas in, in our minds that are floating around. Again, not a backlog, but stuff that we're sort of thinking about actively, deciding what we're going to shape next, what's in progress, ready for the bedding table, and then again, ready for the cycle. These are all the projects we're going to be working on the, the cycle. So you have an inside uh, look at that as well. Um, so we've got these two card tables. We've got a full collection of final work and also some other pitches that didn't make it, but that's why these are finalized and these are just random pitches that were from other cycles that we're keeping around because we might do, but they don't automatically get done just because they were around. We have a message board where we can talk about some bigger picture things. We recently rebooted this project, so there's not a long history here of, of messages, but in many message boards, and I'll show you some other ones, we've got dozens or, or many dozens of, of messages. This is sort of long form um, writing. So for example, here's Brian writing about some top 10 ideas for customer driven improvements from Hay. So Brian spent some time, um, you'll see here, spent time with Chase and Jay-Z and Michelle and Pratik and Jillian and a number of different people and kind of made a top 10 list of the things that customers are asking for. And some of these things we're actually doing this cycle. But that lives here. Um, we have a campfire room, which is um, a real-time chat. So this is a place where you can have these discussions in real time, going back and forth and, and sharing ideas about what's happening and sort of real-time debates that need to happen in the moment, or they typically do here. Sometimes we take it to a call, sometimes we don't, but that's of course what a campfire is. It basically, you know, we don't use Slack internally, we use Basecamp. Basecamp has campfires. Now, another thing I should show you for those of you who are used to Basecamp is we added a feature in Basecamp 4, which we just launched, which allows you to add multiple versions of, of a tool to a project. So typically, you'd only have able to have one to-do list tool, and I'll walk through this in a second, in a project. Now you can have as many as you want. So here's one to-do list tool. Here's another one, which we renamed Feedback and Ideas. So you can rename these things any, any way you want. You can add tools as well. I'll just show you what that looks like. Um, here's a bunch of the tools you can add, and you can say add another. You can also bring in um, links to other tools and other products that you might be using. So we have a library of those as well, which you can add, which is nice, um, and so on. But that's sort of a little bit of framing there. Um, this is typically what we do. This is sort of our, our, our process for um, cycle prep. Again, we do a new cycle every six weeks. We take about two weeks off between cycles and then do it again. So this is sort of the sort of the, the, the checklist for, for doing that sort of thing. Um, and so this is where we sort of organize the ideas, line them up, decide which ones we're going to do, ha store the official initial um, pitches and shaping documents for these things. Now, you'll see there's only three people involved here, okay? But um, there is um, another project we have called product management which is a, a project where more people are involved and will bring these ideas that we're working on as we get them pretty far along to this other group for their feedback prior to deciding what we're gonna do. And some of those people are part of the betting table call and some of them are not. So um, let me show you that one as well. Um, it's right here. There's more people on this. You'll see in the, in the message board, we have a lot of discussions 
This is, by the way, the comment count. So there's a lot of activity um, in here as well. Um, and we talk about some ideas for cycles and we talk about things that a larger group needs to know about. This group happens to be much larger. We put some of the pitches in here. We discuss some stuff here. So this is a, like a larger working group than, um, than uh, the product strategy group. Um, but basically that's, that's the idea. So ideas begin here. Of course, they begin actually outside of here. Customer service brings them up. Designers or programmers bring them up. Customers bring them up. People tweet us, whatever, however they get to us, email us, our own ideas. We sort of collect them here um, in the shaping uh, card table for each product. Um, we sort of refine them, decide which ones we're gonna actually work on, move them through the process, and then have the full list of things we are actually going to do here. Um, and some of these have additional notes as well. And um, that's essentially how it goes. And so it all happens right here in one tool, small group of people. We then bring things to a larger group of people outside of this project and discuss things there, but we keep the official decisions here. Now, once this is all done and the new cycle begins, we kick off new projects for each individual project that we decide to do. And those projects have the people on them that are working on those projects. And we bring the final shaping document and post it inside those projects as well. So that's how this information gets out of this confined space. It gets placed into the different projects we actually kick off as the cycle begins. So I hope this was useful. I'm sure I missed a few things here and there or people have some additional questions. So if you wanna post them down in the comments, I'll be happy to get back to you on them. And maybe I'll do another video addressing some of these questions, but uh, hopefully this gives you a pretty good sense of, uh, of the process, the tools, the place, how it's all contained, how there's a timeline, and so it's really organized and tight and all together. So thanks for watching and talk to you soon.